Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. Today I'm going to show you how I got to this point. So this particular painting, it's still got a, a little ways to go. So uh, we're going to do some more detail at some point. But right now I'm going to show you how to get to this point. So from start to finish, grab your paintbrushes, grab your paints, let's get painting. I'm going to start out first by putting a thin layer of titanium, white, and linseed oil. I'm going to pick up through the entire canvas. Now with just a basic paper towel, I'm going to wipe it down kind of gently just to take off any excess. Of course this is a 16 by 20 canvas pre-gessoed. So now we have the my version of liquid white on there. And try to keep these strokes consistent. So you don't get wavy lines through here. And that's how I prep my canvas. So we have titanium white, phthalo blue, viridian, cad green, cad yellow, van dyke brown, and yellow ochre. So that's what we're going to use for our palette today. I'm going to use a one inch brush, just tap it in to the phthalo blue just a little bit and then we're going to do our sky. So the sky on this painting is going to start with the horizon line a little higher than I normally do. So I'll just bring it up. Now this will blend with the white titanium white and linseed oil underneath so it will lighten it up this is going to be an ocean scene so it's going to be darker blue down here now grabbing my two inch brush it's still got the liquid white on it or <laughs> my liquid white mixture I'm going to start from the bottom and in circles I'm just going to blend this in really well we're starting from the bottom because we want this to be lighter. We want the top to be darker. So if you start bringing all this blue paint down, it's going to make this darker. So if we start from the bottom and go up. And again, circular motions will blend this really well. Get through to all those brush strokes. sky. It's that easy. You can add more paint if you wish, take away paint, change it up any way you like, but basically that's how you do a sky. Now I'm going to try it a little different here too. I'm going to go ahead and make this, well the, the corners, if you make them darker, it helps draw your eye into the focal point. So right here. Same with the bottom. So we'll make these corners and the bottom darker as well. And it just helps for the composition. And back to the two inch brush, circular motions. So because that titanium white and linseed oil is underneath this, this is blending really nice. So now with a smaller brush, 
just going to dab it right into the titanium white. And just get just enough to cover. You can actually, with this you could use a lot of paint. We're going to put some clouds in here. And the clouds are pretty easy. You just kind of put them where you want and roll it in. Give it some character. And depending on what kind of detail you put here, it can actually be more of a difference between a painterly looking painting and more like a photograph. So if you want to try to do it more realistic, just try to put in some more detail and not make it look so cartoony. And it doesn't make it better one way or another, unless you're trying to achieve a particular goal. So the cartoony look, if you want to do that, is actually nice, you know, in, a, in its own right. And of course, the uh, more realistic view looks nice as well. Just a different approach. So just taking a corner of the brush and blending out the bottom. And again, still circular motions. Always seems to get the best results for me. One of the nice things with painting is experimenting. So see what works well for you. Different brushes and everything actually have different effects. I want more of a softer look on here. So I have a what I call a blender brush. This is actually for watercolors. They call it a mop brush. So I'm just going to tap these out. Get rid of some of these lines in here left from the other brush. And blend it a little bit better. Now we don't want to, we want to leave some of these white spots up here. The really rich saturated titanium white. And most, mostly just smooth out the bottom. There we go. And those are my clouds. I added a little lamp black to the palette. We're going to mix that in with some Van Dyke Brown. We want a dark color for this. And just going to use a little bit on a smaller brush, I'm kind of going to draw this land on here and just get it exactly the way I want it. Just fill this in. I'm 
I had a video that I showed you how to do blocking. So basically this is just blocking in your design before you start adding more details and stuff. Helps give you a map on where you want to go. These are rocks. Let's put some big rocks out here as well. Bring that right into the coast. So I just cleaned this one. I'm going to use a little bit of the yellow ochre, some titanium white. trying to come up with a sandy color. Don't want it too dark, don't want it too light. So mix it until you get it where you want. A little bit of the Van Dyke brown to it. Now, I won't mix that all the way in, so it helps give it some variation. I'm going back to this brush. Now I'll just kind of rough in the beach part over here where the sand's at. Of course, this area is going to be, you don't want this in a straight line, right? you want to give it some character, that way it looks more realistic. And this is just roughing in, so if you don't get it exactly right, you can easily change it. It's one of the nice things about oil paints, it is forgiving. Oil paints are more vibrant than acrylic paints. That's one of the reasons why I like using them. The other, the other reason is the color is more accurate. So once you get the color like virtually exactly the way you want it, when it dries, it dries virtually in that color or that shade. A lot of times acrylic paint dries darker and sometimes it's hard to calibrate or judge what the actual color is supposed to be. Okay. So let's take a little titanium white and a little bit of this darker mixture. I mix the two together. We'll take a little bit of the phthalo blue. We want this to be more of a lighter gray. And right back here we'll put a little bit more land mass that's way off in the distance. Helps to give it a little bit more dimension. Now, I'm going to play with some color here. So this is phthalo blue, and this... This is cer cer <laughs> cerulean. Cerulean blue. So I'm going to mix these together to see what we come up with. I think I, initially I call it Viridian. That's the green. So we're just going to take this dark mixture and then the very back here, let's apply it. And let's go a little lower than this horizon line. So if we need to actually do more work to it, it doesn't mess with our sky too much. So I think that's definitely a little too dark. So I'll 
I'll take the pellet knife here. In titanium white, I'm just going to put it right over top. This way it kind of blends it. Back to my brush here. Just blend this through. And then, now we'll bring it up higher. That's about where I want it. So you want this to be pretty straight. Let's go right here. You'll see some artists go ahead and put some tape through here. So it keeps it nice and straight. I didn't do that this time. So it makes it a little bit more difficult. So just take your time if you're doing it like that. Just gonna fill this in. Kinda like coloring a coloring book. So again, we're still kind of in a blocking in stage. Makes it easy. Actually makes it hard to mess up. <laughs> Still in the blocking in stage, you have an opportunity to actually correct things that you see that you want to change. And sometimes it's not just necessarily correcting it, but it is changing it. So if you have a different idea or a different concept you want to consider, you can actually switch things up a little. So here, I don't want to go all the way to the sand, so we're just going to end up doing this, we'll bring this down like that, we'll leave this open for now, and I'll show you what I'm going to do. So because we have the liquid white on there, or the lit, uh, Titanium white mixed with linseed oil. It's making this go on really nice and smooth. Very easy. Now down here on the bottom, as I mentioned earlier, I want to keep this darker. Because in this case there's shadow here. Plus it helps draw your eye into the center. I'm going in this direction, back and forth, trying to keep this as level as possible. Helps for the water effect. Now, there's more you could do to adding the waves and stuff, and you could even kind of put them in, in you know, round motions and stuff, but at least initially, it's easier when it's blocked in flat. So I'm going to take a little titanium white, mix it with the Viridian Green. So we have a lighter green. Now we're going to fill in this area right here. Now going up towards the sand, we want it to be lighter. And because we have the white and tit or titanium white and linseed oil through here, it's going to mix automatically. So the darker colors will be in with the waves here. And then it'll get lighter going this way. So we might have to wipe off the brush before we start working with this area. We don't carry all that paint in here. So this is blended together. So to get this transition nice, just lightly blend it. And it'll mix the two together. There we go. And again, try to keep it flat. And if you bring this blue in, the blue is actually a lot more concentrated than the green. 
So it will actually start making this dark really fast. So be careful with that. Now I'm going to take this and just wipe it on a paper towel. And now let's kind of blend it this way and see how we're doing. So because that's mixing with the white now, it is a lot lighter. take some cerulean blue and add a little bit more color through here just blending it in and work with this until you get it where you want a little word of advice step back so you can actually see it and see how it's turning out So I'm going to mix it with some more phthalo blue down here because I want this darker. And this is just straight phthalo blue. I'll mix with the colors on the canvas. And this is the cerulean blue. Add some more paint up here so it gives it more contrast. Up here too. This way we have a nice, deep, rich blue ocean. Let's go. Be careful with this. I'm adding a lot of the green here, but I'll blend it in so it's not so rich. I like working with colors. I used to work with black and white all the time. And it helps for drawing, especially if you're doing charcoal. But then after I started doing oil painting, I really started enjoying working with colors. So now you'll see a lot of my paintings are actually pretty vibrant. There's, there's a lot of color in it. And that's why. So took some titanium white want some more blending capability through here so we're just going to help blend this together better So right here, a lot of times when the water hits the sand, it starts turning like a grayish color. So I took a little titanium white and the darker color that I used up here. We're just going to add a little bit of that. So it makes it look like a little more realistic. 
and just put it up here on the sand where the water touches. Now I want this to be smoother, so what I'm going to do is I have my paper towel ready and my mop brush and I'm going to blend this out to make it smoother. So basically you lightly touch it and that'll blend it really nice. And again I'm going to go in this direction for the most case or if I want the waves to go in a particular pattern, then I'm going to start creating that pattern right now. So in this case, it's going to radiate down this way. Again, be careful with the mixture. So once you start getting some of the blue up here, it's going to take away from some of the green. So I want to try to keep that green mixture in there. Yeah, it's starting to get better. Through this area right here, it is a lot softer. So, just gonna make it nice and soft. And this line right through here with the gradation not smooth enough so I want to blend this a lot better So lightly touching it with the brush and going back and forth, kind of using just the corner part of the brush, and just tapping it, or uh, not tapping it, but just lightly going over it. And it seems to be blending pretty well. Can add a little bit more of the gray up through here. And the variations help, so that way it's not consistent all the way through everything. Gives us some character. There we go. Again, back to the blending. Let's just lightly touch this. Still want this to be darker. So I'm going to take a palette knife, add more paint to it. Just phthalo blue. Keep it lighter through here. So I'm going to start brushing this way so I keep more of the darker area here. So just barely touch this part. So when I blended this one, I start seeing it carry lines of paint through this area. I'll wipe off the brush because I don't want to continue carrying more paint over. So.
that said, looks like there's some kind of underwater formation here. So it's going to be darker. So we'll do that in here too. Again, lightly go over with the blending brush. Now we want to go ahead and start fleshing this out. So I took a little cad yellow and some of the green, mixed it together so it's a little bit lighter green until you get the mixture you want. And then I'm just going to start, I want to see how this actually turns out here. So I might need to do a couple other things. It's not too bad. I want to make it a little darker. Just kind of dab some of the paint on there to give it more of a organic look. Kind of looks like you got trees all over, bushes. And mix it up with a little lamp black just to give it some depth. Now this is more in the background, so you don't want to add a whole lot of detail. Greener up through here. So I added some titanium, uh, cad yellow. It's still dabbing it in there. And if you leave some of the initial lighter roughing area in the background and between some of the spaces, actually we'll give it more of a dirt effect. So you don't have to fill up everything. And go for some variation, so lighter, darker, lighter, darker. Help show shadows and stuff for the shrubbery. I want this area down here to be lighter because that's where the sun's actually hitting. So up towards this area right here, there's a lot of dark. So the sun's just catching this area right here a little bit better. Here we have some dark. A lot of shadow.
fun painting sometimes you can actually look at it like clay so you're just adding paint but you're sculpting so the darker areas go in lighter areas come out grab a little bit bigger brush that's a one inch we'll just tap it into the green and cad yellow we could go back and add more detail so we just want to kind of block this in When I do this, I just keep thinking, trees. <laughs> Sometimes it helps. Take just a little bit and put it here. This area, we want to be really dark. Because there's a lot of shadow in through here. So going for the darkest colors on my palette. So we have some lamp black, some greens, some of the blue. Just kind of blocking it in. So I add some more dark layers through here. So I'm going to take a fan brush and dip it into the green directly. And then I'll just tap in certain areas. Help tie this in all together. Then you could go in with some highlights and make this stand out a lot better.
Gonna put in a few highlights for now. So uh, wash the fan brush using a little bit of the green, with a little bit more of the cad yellow. I want to get a decent enough amount on the brush here. I'm going to add a little bit of white to the sand here. So just tap into the titanium white. Don't have a whole lot on there. You want to blend it. So let's go right in through here.
Van Dyke Brown and Yellow Ochre. I'm just going to run it right underneath this, these shrubs. Clean up this area a little. Through this area it gets a lot darker because of shadow. dark. 